Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete. And you know what, I feel like leaving my basement shop today and taking a little field trip. So I'm going to drive about 20 miles from here and meet my buddy Matt Krug and his brother Jason. Now they own and operate Lost Creek Machinery. I've talked about that before. And very recently they got a new batch of machinery including some beautiful South Bend 10 inch heavy lathes. So I want you to see those. I hope he lets me in there. I'm sure he will. And then I'd like to take a walk through in his shop, show you just a small portion of the inventory that he has. I'm not being paid for this. He's just a friend of mine. And I'm always interested in looking at machinery. I'm only going to show you a small part of what he has because it would just take too long. Sorry again for the handheld camera. I do not have one of those gyro things that smooth it out. So there's some poor photography, poor lighting, but I think you'll be excited to see some of these uh, machines that came out of a school, especially these South Bends, because they're in remarkably good condition and had not been used in 10 or 20 years. And finally the school was going to update, bring in CNC or something like that, and uh, dispose of the old equipment. So. Take a ride with me. See you in a few minutes. Oh, that did clean up nice. When the uh, first time we went in there, um, they had some 13s as well. Everyone loves that large spindle hole. <laughs> okay, put her back on, Matt. And by the way, this is Matt Krug, <laughs> the co-owner, if I have that correct. Yep, yeah, me to, and my brother. To, to, uh, along with his brother Jason, to uh, this company called Lost Creek Machinery. So I'm getting a, a nice tour here and uh, making a video here and I think you'll enjoy seeing it. All right, if you want to buy a good South Bend 10 inch heavy, here it is. And I'm not on commission. <laughs> Big set of chrome dials. Just the way we set things up in a school, you know. This is a nice machine. At the end of the hour, every tool better be in, in place, <laughs> which it never was.
All right. I'm at Lost Creek Machinery near Ottawa, Illinois. Many of you people know what uh, this is all about. And these uh, men, they're great men, the Krugs, and they're very honest, upright, machinery dealers, but let's take a look at some of the other nice machinery that they have in stock and ready to sell. Beautiful do-all, like I had at the high school. A Grobe is what we had when I was a high school student, and I met Mr. Grobe one time, actually twice, once in Grafton, Illinois, and once at the Machine Tool Show. That's many years ago. I'm sure he's long gone. But we've got a lot of nice machinery here. I'll just give you a little overview. They have a website. I'll put the link in the description. There's a nice closing. Here's a South Bend milling machine like I had at the high school or similar. They were really good machines. South Bend did a few unique things. They used one of their quick change gear boxes or an adaptation thereof for the power feed. But what I'm really wanting to show you here, initially before I bought my bridge port that I have in the basement, I wanted to buy a South Bend because the column is separate from the base and it could have been disassembled. I believe it's bolted from the bottom and it would be very easy to take this apart and move it down into a basement compared to a bridge port which I'm standing right next to as you see here. Now I think later on South Bend made their castings like this rather than this. I don't think a lot of South Bend milling machines were made and they had a round ram which was a little bit of a problem. This picture of my girlfriend standing next to the vertical mill is from the South Bend catalog 1956. Now notice the base here, all one piece. The one that I showed you there at Lost Creek was built in about 1965. So I'm wondering if these catalog pictures from 1956 are mock-ups rather than production models. Or did they change the design? Put it in the comments if you know. Lots of drill presses.
Here's everyone's favorite bender, a Haasfeld. I had one of those at the high school. And I had a Diacro bender. There were three or four sizes. I did have one of these at home once, but it was ruined by rust. And I had one at the high school that was bigger than this, one size bigger than this. They are amazing machines. So this is one of these has got a bunch of parts and stuff. Here's some tailstock barrel. 5C adapter. Bunch of lag bolts. There must be good stuff in that one. Is, is this from the same School. establishment? Yep, yep. This one says foundry pattern, but there's probably nothing in there. Could will that open or not? I couldn't get that one open. Some sort of powder. What is that? That's parting sand for foundry. Okay. I believe. Matter of fact, foundry parting sand. There it is. I don't know what that looks like wax. My gosh. Those are crucible blocks. Well, you know that. Making a water bath? Mm. Yeah. This one here that says Petropon powder. Oh, that's Petrobon powder there. It's not parting sand. But that, that white stuff is parting sand. I wish I could get that one. That, that they no longer have any allure. They want the... People want an allurus, don't yeah. they? First aid. Files. <laughs> <laughs> One duller than the next. T bolts or carriage. Cordless drills. <laughs> yeah. Batteries never go out. No. Wait a minute. This is a Peterson product C clamp that is made from our patterns. I'll be doggone. You got a few of those, do you? And my brother would have made uh, the original pattern. That's something. No, no. You got a few of them? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't. You can have it. All right. I'm gonna. Thank you. Yeah. So there's a souvenir. Bridgeport part. I recognize that gear there, I thought. But... That's for the ram? Yes. There's a worm that goes into that, I believe. Yeah, yeah, the worm for tilting the yeah, left and right. I, I had... I replaced one of those on my mill years ago. All kinds of South Bend gears. Wipers. <laughs> Felt wipers. That's for the clutch for the power feed.
It's amazing that over the years somebody didn't scrap all of this Not stuff. For sure. That looks like it's off a of rock well, maybe. Yeah, Delta down here it says. What are those guys? I don't know, unless that's a student project. Cleaners, they had a Wells bandsaw. What are those for? For cleaning the blades on a bandsaw, horizontal bandsaw. Oh, okay. So yeah. those would sit behind the right. bearing or in front of the bearings, I guess. Tool post wrenches, man. Some brand new South Bends. Closer. Hold the cop oh, draw yeah. tube. Red stops. Oh yeah. Red stops. Thread cleaners. These salt bin boxes, no. No, they're uh, for holding dies, threading dies. Oh yeah, but those could be. They're imports. Imports, yeah. Well, as you know, I live in the past, and I have talked endlessly and bored the heck out of you talking about Peterson products and some of the projects that we sold to schools, actually they were the, the patterns to make projects such as this C-clamp, but now in this scene here very unexpectedly my friend Matt opens up a drawer and this uh, all these drawers came from a school a hundred miles from here and tun 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 that is what was in the drawer I instantly recognized it my brother made the patterns you know so there's a sample I had here in the basement for some time and this is a very nice example because it was made with Acme threads and in the directions in the blueprint there was an option of making V threads such as this for a general metals class but if it was being made in a machine shop class the screw was turned on the lathe you can see the center hole there and he did a very nice job making a swivel didn't clean the casting up and painted it red I do not know why no name but there we found it in a drawer where it has been setting probably for 35 years and Matt says you want that? on their ass, so, so he gave it to me. <laughs> Just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. 